The second movement of the Pathetic Sonata is one of Beethoven's sweetest melodies. After the heavy and quite angry first movement, we need a relief, a break from all the stress. And this is the perfect piece to relax and just float along those long legato lines. It's in rondo form with a lovely theme in A flat major and two episodes in between. So Adagio Cantabile is very slow and singable and it's the right hand melody that is singing in this low register that resonates so well. And we have accompaniment chord notes in the right hand as well that is like a small engine for the music taking it forward this. There's three things about this melody that I want to point out. The first is harmonically. There is like a trick that Beethoven uses. He takes the third in the bass on two chords and that helps make this character. It's a stable chord but slightly more interesting. So we have root position and this chord, and then another uh, chord note in the bass, and this chord. This is A flat major with a third in the bass. And then the next chord as well, third in the bass, then a little bit of counterpoint with the left hand. So when the right hand goes up, the left hand goes down. And then the second thing, we look at the contour of the whole melody. So the first half of it is going upward. Then the second half, now it's going down again. So that makes it this very natural and organic rise and fall. And that's what we can enjoy when we listen. And finally, the third detail is when we get to the end. this chord. So if we would stay within the A flat major tonality and only use the diatonic scale, uh, the notes in A flat major scale, it would be an A flat. So it would be like this. That is a very smooth way, but Beethoven alters that and puts in the A natural, making it the F seven chord as a dominant to the B flat minor chord and we're going through the circle of fifth and that's what makes it this very nice feeling but this adds an extra flavor this uh, major chord outside the diatonic A flat major scale and now we're back with the A flat as well okay after we've had this theme here we get it one more time in a higher register, one octave up, with uh, these triplets to, to kick off the motion. Even more singable. Now we get the first episode and this is a little bit more heavy music. We get repeated chords instead of engine motion. Uh, it starts off with one note and then it's chord and uh, it's in minor, F minor, the relative minor to A flat major. Here 
it turns slightly more hopeful, even cheerful, with a sudden burst of ornamentation. And going to major. And here we're digging in the deep dark register for a little bit. Subito piano, sudden piano. And we're back with the theme. It sounds even lovelier when we had an episode kind of in minor uh, getting back to the major. And I have to mention the similarity to Mozart's sonata in C minor. In the middle of the slow movement in the Mozart sonata, we get a melody that Beethoven was inspired by for this melody. Uh, so this is the Mozart. So it's the exact same uh, contour for the first three notes. So Beethoven used this, but he transformed it and made it into his own melody, the pathetic. Now we're at the place of the second episode. So this is also in minor and it's also repeated chords but they're now in triplets. So it's like even more serious. It's like the first time it didn't take. So now we raise the stakes or since it's a compliment we up the ante. Also get this dialogue between the hand. The left hand gets some say to this also. And it's developing a little bit, modulating, so now we're in E major. We get this dialogue again, but it turns a little bit scary with these diminished chords, a lot of tension and very deep down. But we end up safe with the return of the theme for the third time. And it's a tradition when you have the return of the theme in a slow movement to add ornamentation to it for the last time. It's very common in uh, slow movements in Mozart, for example. But here in Beethoven, we get the theme, uh, the melody exactly as it is, with these uh, calm, bare notes, but the accompaniment is varied. We keep the triplets from the second episode, and that adds energy to it uh, for an even fuller statement the third time. Now we get it again 
one octave up and with the left hand and triplet so now it's like everything is coming together here. It's a super nice place in a kind of a subtle way. So we've had this bass with a wide register and a full sound with the bass. Bass. But then suddenly the bass disappears for a little while and it's like we're lifting from the ground and have play only in this register. then we get the bass again, it's like we land safely, it's also very nice. And now we just have a small coda left, rounding off the theme. We get this E flat repeated in the left hand. That's a dominant pedal to A flat, uh, signaling that the piece is ending soon. Now the melody reaches the highest note in the piece for a final statement. And we get these uh, cadential progressions going back down, falling down in the register again. That's it for the second movement. Now we're primed to move on in the sonata to the final chapter of the energetic rondo of the third movement. This is Sonata Secrets, unlocking the world of classical music. Subscribe if you're new here and check out my other videos. And a special thank you and shout out to my Patreon sponsor Saida in this episode.